I'm sure that most everyone watching this video right now is familiar with a component like this. This is a resistor, and I'm almost certain that you learn about this component first when you're learning about electronic circuits. I also bet that you wondered at least once about what a negative resistor would look like, and if it was even possible. Well, you see, the short answer is both yes and no. Because in nature, there's no such thing as a truly negative resistor. There are, however, components that act like negative resistors over certain intervals. So in this video, I'm going to explain to you what exactly negative resistance is, how you can make one of your own, and just for a little bit of fun, I'm going to show you negative capacitances and inductances. If you've been working with electronics for long enough, then you've certainly built up an intuition about how resistors work. If we connect a resistive load to a power supply, we can calculate the load by using Ohm's law. A larger value of a resistor will result in a much smaller current, and a smaller resistor will result in a much larger current. Nothing new here, but try to imagine what a negative resistor would do. Let's take an example from both perspectives on the number line. Starting with a positive resistance of 1 kilo ohm and a power supply dialed in at 5 volts, we should get a current of 5 milliamps. Let's now imagine a component that somehow has a resistance of negative 1 kilo ohm, and we will use the same power supply. Since the supply is locked in at its 5 volt drop, we can only change the current. Let's plug it into Ohm's law. And we should be getting a negative 5 milliamps. That's right, current will be flowing from ground to 5 volts. This is kind of fun to think about. And we can actually simulate this experimentally in real life. Now, there's no such thing as a truly negative resistor. But certain components exhibit the behavior of negative resistance over certain intervals. The most interesting of which I think is definitely a reverse biased NPN transistor, which is sometimes called an Agister. We can get a better understanding of why this works when we take a look at the diode view of the transistor. We can see the two diodes pointing away from the base towards the collector and emitter. And when we reverse bias the emitter, we reach one of the two states found in the diode, either an avalanche or Zener breakdown. You may be familiar with the Zener breakdown from the Zener diodes. An avalanche breakdown has similar properties, but is a bit different. Either way, it will allow us to use our transistor as an agister. And there are only certain periods in which the agister actually gives us negative resistance. For today, let's focus on the simplest oscillator that we can make, which is just an agister and a capacitor. Make sure to leave the base of the transistor unconnected, because otherwise it will mess with the oscillations. For this experiment, I used a 1K resistor, a 1 millifarad capacitor, a 2N2222 transistor, and a 15 volt power supply. Here is the resulting ramp wave output on my oscilloscope. We get this ramp oscillating at 10 Hz, which is not bad for undocumented behavior. This whole circuit works by first charging at the capacitor. Then, once the breakdown voltage is reached, then the gister starts its avalanche process and starts conducting at an increasing rate as the voltage drops. That is, until the voltage drops low enough to stop the conduction altogether. Then, the entire process repeats with the capacitor charging up again. If we want to, we can speed up the oscillation. Let's replace the resistor with a 330 ohm resistor instead. This should make the capacitor charge even faster, and therefore it should increase the frequency. And indeed it does. The only problem with the circuit is its amplitude, but I'm sure that you could fix it if you really needed it to. I also tested the circuit on a few other transistors. The 2N3904 worked too, but it was a whole lot slower. It ran at just 1.2 Hz, so it seems like it has the least negative resistance of the bunch. The BC337 was in between the other two, with a frequency of 6.5 Hz. Anyways, while the circuit is cool, there's another circuit that you can make will work even better. Let me introduce to you the negative impedance converter, which, unlike the negister and other similar components, can supply a negative impedance over any voltage range, that is, as long as your supply is up to the task. Let me show you the resistor example first, since that will be the easiest to understand. Remember from the beginning of the video when I showed you the positive 1K ohm resistor? Well, here's the result when I use a negative 1K resistance instead. And yes, we are correct when we predicted that the current would be negative 5 milliamps. I know that a lot of you are wondering how the circuit works, so I'll explain it to you. Before we start, the op amp that I used was the LM358. Anyways, as for the operation, the most important piece, the bottom resistor here, is the one that is becoming the negative resistor. As for the actual functionality of the entire circuit, we should remember the main rules of the op amps, which are that the input should be kept at equal voltages, no current will flow in or out of the inputs, 
and the output will do whatever it can to keep the inputs equal. Just watch my video on op amps if you want a refresher on all this. So that means our power supply will keep the non-inverting input at 5 volts. And therefore, by those rules, the inverting input will also be kept at 5 volts. That means that we can calculate our current through the bottom resistor. And since we are using a 1K resistor, we will get 5 milliamps of current flowing. Since the inputs don't affect the current, the current flowing through the bottom resistor is also the same to the second resistor. The output of the op amp will provide the same voltage to the top two resistors. And since the voltages of the two inputs are the same, the voltage drop from the top two resistors is the same. And since the resistors are the same value, they will have the same current. And since the bottom resistor has 5 milliamps of current flowing through it, we can say that the top resistor also has a 5 milliamp current flowing through it. And there you have it. We've basically simulated a negative resistance by inverting the resistance on the bottom resistor. And again, to change the resistance, all that we have to do is to replace the bottom resistor. So I'll swap out the 1K for a 330 ohm resistor just to show you. And again, under normal positive conditions, we should get a current of 15 milliamps. So inversely, we should get negative 15 milliamps with a negative resistor. And we are correct. We get a reverse current of about 15 milliamps. Now that we can simulate negative resistance, you might be thinking of ways that you can use it. For example, you should know that resistors in series add up. So two 1Ks in series should equal a total resistance of 2K. Sounds good, but what if we combine a 1K and a negative 1K in series? Well, according to the addition, we should get 0 ohms, aka a dead short. Luckily, we can also try this. I simply added another 1K in between the negative impedance converter and the power supply. And we get a current of negative 7 milliamps, which at first glance might not seem like a short circuit, but the output voltage is actually limited by the op amp, and increasing the op amp supply increases the current. So yes, it is a simulated short circuit if you had infinite current and voltage to supply it with. This could be especially useful if you want to remove some annoying resistance. This also works in the other direction by using parallel resistances. If we use the parallel resistor equation, we will get an undefined answer with a divided by zero. However, if we take the limit of this, we will get an infinite resistance. And this does work in real life too, barely any current flows. This could be especially useful for when you need to essentially cancel out a resistive load on a device that can't handle it by itself. Just remember though, this device is not a free energy device. You still need to provide all the power from another source. Now, to wrap things up, I did tease negative capacitances and inductances at the beginning of the video, so I'll talk about those now. Let's start without the negative impedance converter. Here is a 100 nanofarad capacitor and a 1 kilo ohm resistor in series with this AC sine wave signal. The AC signal is running at 1 kilohertz. At 1 kilohertz, this capacitor should have a reactance of about 1.6 kilo ohms. And by drawing out the impedance triangle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for the total impedance. And if we do that, we should get an impedance of 1.9 kilo ohms and a phase angle of negative 58 degrees, which means that the current should lead the voltage. And checking this in the oscilloscope, we are correct. The purple line here is the current and the yellow one is the voltage. But what happens when we put this into the negative impedance converter? Well, some of you may have already noticed this when we were doing our impedance calculations. If you go up the axis in the direction of negative resistance, you go up into the inductance region. So yes, a negative capacitor is an inductor. But let's try this out. I replace the resistor with our capacitor. And before I show you the results, we should expect one main thing. The voltage should lead the current this time. And let's try this out. And yes, the voltage does lead the current. So we've essentially converted a capacitor into an inductor, albeit with a fair amount of instability. Well, congratulations. You now know about negative impedances and how you can use them in your own circuits. This topic doesn't come up too often when you're making circuits, but it's certainly useful to know about when it finally does. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video and learned something new, I'd really like to encourage you to check out my Buy Me A Coffee page. You see, these videos take a considerable amount of time and effort to make, and with your support, I can continue making more of them. Big thanks to the people who are already supporting me. And thanks for watching. Have a good one.